Greetings creative folks, hope you're not fed up with plan tutorials because I promise this one is a bit different. As always, source files on Patreon, now let's stick our heads back in the clouds. This time around we're going to start with a sphere. When there's going to be volumetric shading happening, the size of your balls actually does matter. And I like mine at a hefty 333 centimeters. And then I'm going to stick that ball into a cloner object. Keep it set to grid, but set the count to 50 by 25 and 100 centimeters per step. And you know what goes really well with a cloner object? That's right, a random effector. And this one we want operating on the position with a very high number, 1250 on the X, only 250 on the Y and 1250 on the Z as well. And scale we want, we want it to be uniform and we want it to be 0.6. So we get a healthy bit of randomness in our balls. Now this is going to form the sort of carpet of the cloud. And now that's done. So we're going to duplicate it, call it mid, and this is going to form the middle of our cloud. Start by that, moving that one up and slightly to the side and changing the count down to 10 on the X and on the Z. Space these balls out by increasing the size of the per step to honey and fitty. And let's grow our balls from 333 to 500 centimeters. That's the middle layer of the cloud. Let's duplicate that and create a topping layer. Again, move that up on the Y axis to 1,500. But let's change the count to 636 so we get a few more on the Y axis. Keep the first step, um, except for the Y axis per step, which we're gonna set to full around 400. Now this is gonna be the general shape of our cloud. And to get a nice shape of our cloud, we wanna find a nice seed for the random effector. And you know, there's a few you can choose between, but I found that a good seed for this is seven. And finally, one thing we want to do is go into the carpet under effectors and make sure that one's affected extra much by the effector. So it doesn't look like much yet, but now it's time to toss all of this into a volume builder. The carpet, the mid, the topping. Now the voxel size is a bit too high. It gives us the polygons as well. So let's change that to 50 centimeters. Makes our balls a little softer. And then we want to add a cuboid cutter to this. You see, most clouds tend to be quite flat on the underside, but this one looks like a bubble bath. So our cuboid cutter, we're going to make that one 10,000 by 1,000 by 10,000 centimeters. Move that down on the Y by 1,000 centimeters and drop that into the volume builder and change the mode to subtract. Now that flattens the underside of our cloud, like a cat sitting on a glass table. Now we want to add SDF smooth to the volume builder as well to just soften the whole thing out a little bit. Not quite that much, just around 10%. So we get rid of only the tiniest balls. Now you might think we're going to render this with a volume shader unless I'd told you before that we weren't, but you'd be wrong. See, this is now ready to be thrown into a volume measure before we start shading. And your voxel range threshold is going to make your clouds eh, more or less puffy. All right, now we're ready to ready to shade this. As of yet, it doesn't look like much, I admit. Just a bunch of globby blobs or blobby globs. But we start where we always start, by making a material and adding it to the thing. And this is somehow going to turn into a cloud. First of all, clouds are white, so we're going to turn them white, turn off the reflection, and under the base color, we're going to turn up the diffuse roughness, which is going to soften the whole look. And now we're going to go into the subsurface scattering. This is where our globby blobs turn into clouds. I'll set the weight to a nice and high 0.8, and then set the scale to a nice and very high 333. And that gives us well, some rather nice looking bubbles actually, but not quite clouds. So let's change the mode from random walk to ray traced and let's set it to include all objects in case we want to add some more clouds to the scene later so it doesn't look messed up. And finally, we want to change the radius color to a sort of light blue situation. Now, this is a rather nice and stylized cloud, to be honest, but it could be even nicer. Let's add ourselves a max on noise and plug that max on noise into a displacement node and plug that displacement into the displacement output. And every time you do that, you want to add a redshift tag to your object, go into geometry, check the override, check the tessellation, and check the displacement. And for this situation, we want 
supremely high displacement. I'm going to set it to 400 max and 400 scale. And I'll uncheck the auto bump mapping. Now the rest of the magic is all going to take place in the noise node. Let's set the type to cranal. Set the overall scale under input to 66. Make it real big so it's less fuzzy and more puffy. And then we go into the displacement shader and set the new range minimum to something like minus 0.66. This is going to sharpen up our cloud a bit and center the displacement. And look at that. Suddenly it looks close to realistic. Okay, hold up. So while it looks the best to render with this kind of subsurface scattering, it is pretty slow. As you can see, this took 30 seconds and there's still a bit of grain in the image. But if you simply change the subsurface scattering mode from simply ray traced to point based, it's 10 times quicker. But it still looks pretty nice. And you can get back some of that look if you simply crank up the subsurface scale to about three times what you had on the ray traced one, like so. And then in Material Blender, you plug in another material where it's set to about the same scale. And finally, a third one where it's set to about a third of it. And this is actually the one I used for the little panda piece. And there I also animated the maximum noise ever so slightly to get a bit of movement in the clouds. All of that is included on Patreon. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. So that was Redshift, but what about Standard Cinema? Surely Standard Cinema 4D can't do anything like this. Wrong again, Home Slice. It most certainly can. So now we're here in Standard Renderer, and maybe this is the sort of render that you expect from Standard, but then you're expecting wrong. Let's create ourselves a material. It's a PBR one, that's fine. Let's turn off the reflectance, turn on the standard color, set it to 100% white, change the model to Oren AR, same as we had in Redshift, and turn the roughness up to 100%, same as we had in Redshift. So far, so good. Now let's actually start with the displacement. Turn that on. In texture, we create our noise. Set the height to 400 centimeters, and we get ourselves a spiky fuzz. Let's set up our noise, change it to cranal, and let's change the black color to a little bit higher, around 20%, just so we lift the shadows a little bit. Look at how nicely that puffed up. Now let's turn up the global scale to about 600%, which translates to roughly the same that we had in Redshift. Go up into our displacement again, turn on sub polygon displacement, turn on round geometry, and now we've got our shape back. Now let's turn down the color to only about 33%, because we're about to add luminance with subsurface magic. So under texture, I will add an effect, subsurface scattering. It's already looking kind of nice. Now in that shader, let's set the color to full white, turn up the path length to 400 centimeters, nice and soft. Open up the little drop down and turn on the red to about 60%, green to about 66%. And now we're actually getting somewhere. The final piece of this puzzle, the final cherry pond top, go under the multiple tab, change it from cache mode to direct mode. And now we're gonna get that detail back, but at the cost of a lot of grain. So let's turn on the custom sampling and set that to something around six or seven. And then we wait. Now we got ourselves that nice detail back and a fairly nice looking cloud with standard renderer. Who would have thunk it? Patreon.com slash motion biking. That's where you find the source files. And I cannot thank you mortal patrons enough. And I predict for you all cloudy weather with spells of stay in motion. Oh.